Hello all YouTubers, I am the Dude. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Thank you all for tuning back into this presentation for June 25th, 2019 at exactly 6 o'clock in the evening in fact. So please subscribe and also ring the bell notifications never miss one of my videos again. As as always, look in the description with other, for other videos of mine with superior weather content that you won't find anywhere else. Very useful to watch some of my other videos. And I actually wanted to show you guys real quick. I actually did start making some playlists. So uh, some of my past videos that I that I did do for you guys. So uh, please consider checking those out as well. But as always, please consider sharing this video with others to make sure they are informed about what's going on. So today's presentation is going to be about the El Nino has actually dissipated. But I'm going to talk about how it might return. But as of right now, it has actually dissipated. It is, we are in a neutral phase in the tropical pacific so again here are some of my playlists okay like videos is made automatically i didn't make that one but like severe weather coverage ocean and beach forecast my definition videos uh, my winter storm coverage my 2019 Atlantic hurricane season outlooks i hope to get some more hypothetical hurricane season animations out there and of course me doing winter sports we all remember that right all right let's get right into it so we are in an inactive phase we were in an El Nino watch, but we are not anymore. And let's let's just prove that right here. Okay, you can just see all these blues. These oranges and yellows are being replaced by blues across the tropical and equatorial uh, Pacific Oceans. I mean, we it's definitely warm in the Nino 4 region, but in the 3-4 region is the one, like, is the most accurate one for determining the El Nino or La Nina or neutral. And... Let's actually look at the Nino 3-4 on this on this graph right here. And our latest value is actually a plus 0 0.305. So being in El Nino, we need at least plus 0 0.5, which means it's it's 0.3 degrees above average and or 0.3 degrees Celsius above average. And in order to have an El Nino, we need to be 0.5 degrees above average Celsius. So you can see like right around like the beginning of May, maybe the first week of May, we had like a spike up to about a degree and then we just sailed down for pretty much the rest of May we were pretty much just pretty low and then we went back up towards the beginning of June we were actually pretty high as well near a degree which is pushing the pushing the edges of a weak El Nino and then ever since then we just been kind of up and down but overall the trend has just been just skyrocketing down okay and this is the line we need to be at actually that was kind of sloppy this is the line that we need to be at in order to have an El Nino, and we're down here. So we're pretty far away from it as of now. But again, I'm going to be talking about how it could possibly return as well. It's all, it can all be a possibility. Alright, so let's just read this little description here, actually. So, the ENSO outlook has been re reset to inactive, which means we're not in a La Nina, we're not in an El Nino, but we're actually like right in the middle, like inactive. The immediate likelihood of El Nino developing has passed. With, um, with ENS so neutral, the most likely scenario through the southern winter and spring. So the latest ob observations of both atmospheric and oceanic ENS so indicators are largely neutral. Okay, so there you go. And the odds of event of an El Nino, it doesn't mean it's zero, but it did drop below 50%, which is why it's an inactive. Um, if if the odds of, if the odds of an El, an El Nino, excuse me, are 50%, then that would be considered a El Nino watch, which is kind of a possibility of an El Nino, but that's one higher. That's right, right here. All right, and that I was just talking to you guys about this because they just issued this today, and the next issue, as you can see at the top of your screen, is going to be on July 9th. They just issued this today, June 25th. That's why I was telling you guys in my last video that I did. I was like, I, you guys got to watch this video because it's going to come out today. All right. So here's what I'm talking about. It's gonna make a comeback. Just so like so this all of these are just like ensemble models, all these little spaghetti models saying where where everything could possibly go. But this green line, this is like a forecast that basically takes all of these little lines that you see here and just blends them together. It's like an average, a mean kind of. All right. So according to all these ensembles, we might get. So this is the anomalies. Okay. So the lower these anomalies are. The closer you are to La Nina and probably a more active hurricane season you will have. And it looks like we might get to our lowest value right around maybe 
first or second week of September. And that is the peak of hurricane season. And that's pretty scary. So if we have the most favorable conditions at the peak of hurricane season, it's gonna be in, we're going to be in big trouble. But look at this. October, kind of like last year, we might start climbing back up. Back towards an El Nino. I think a lot of the models are doing this. It's going to go down as we head through summer summer and very early fall. And then it's going to spike back up as we head into the winter time. What, and what could that mean for the winter? Well, it all depends on that jet stream flow. Okay? A lot of people were saying for the winter because the Gulf of Alaska was, was so far below average. Okay? Because they thought they had this high pressure here. And they thought they were having these big jet stream patterns. And they thought the East Coast was going to be all blizzards. But there was just dry air. And also, it happened to be a moderate El Nino instead of a weak El Nino. And also what happened was the high pressure was situated here like it was, like it was supposed to. But what happened was, just the jet stream actually went down towards the west. So the west and the central plains got all the snow in the winter. And that's why we kind of just got it wrong with that. I mean, I really wasn't going to go too all out with the calling for a big winter. But let's go back to the topic that we're discussing. Okay, so, for for there to be an El Nino watch, it's got to be neutral or declining La Nina, okay? And, as a matter of fact, let's actually look at the trade winds. Let me see if I can find that real quick. So, the trade, so the trade winds with the La Nina are going to be above average. So, in the, with the El Nino, obviously, it's going to be the opposite. So, the trade winds would, would be below average. But if I actually look at the trade winds right now... Look at the anomalies. The trade winds are above average over the equatorial equatorial and tropical Pacific. So that's kind of pointing towards La Nina. That doesn't mean it is a La Nina. But that, that would mean it's pointing towards a La Nina just because we have one factor that points towards a La Nina. Okay, and the mean I just look at the anomalies because the mean I don't know where like where or where it shouldn't be. Let's actually go to right now. So this is the the sea surface temperature anomalies, like I was showing you before. I'll zoom in a little bit there. All right, so you can see much of the Atlantic is slightly above average. Let me actually switch my color to a neon green for a sec. And yeah, just don't forget to share this video with your friends if you can, because this is very important to decide our hurricane season. And what I'm gonna do before, and I hope this isn't annoying, I'm just gonna flip back and forth between tabs. So it's gonna be like this, just to show you this year compared to last year. All right, so this year. One thing I want to point out that's very different is that you can see right now, this region right here that I highlight in green is like slightly above average or decently above average. Look at last year. Now in this now in this area, last year was below average at this time, last year. Okay, I know it says the 25th, the 24th, it's pretty much all the same. It's the closest I could find because they this updates every few days. And of course, if you see any white regions, that indicates sea ice. And th speaking of which, there was actually some news that... Like just came out like a few hours ago off the Weather Channel. There's a huge freshwater reservoir that stretched from Massachusetts down to New Jersey. And it was just twice the size of Lake Ontario. So that could help people, for example, like in Cape Town. Or Cape Town down here in South Africa that I'm highlighting in green. They're really lacking water. Or anybody else that's lacking water could get some help with that freshwater reservoir there. Very good news. Anyway, so the North Atlantic was much colder last year than compared to this year. And we still had an a active year. Well, one other thing that you might notice is that the El Nino pattern was actually a little bit stronger last year, but eventually flipped over to a neutral phase. But the El Nino pattern last year was a little bit stronger at this time in June. But as I'm flipping through, last year the Gulf of Mexico was slightly cooler than average, as well as the Northern Caribbean. And let's see if I can find anything else. But down by South America, it's like we have this little train of cool air. That's just coming down this way. Kind of pushing some colder air. Actually, since it's the southern hemisphere, actually the colder air comes from the south and east. Or the south, because it's the southern hemisphere. So that's the, uh, kind of like the opposite. Because you got the cold air blowing from like Antarctica down here, blowing northward. Alright, let me see. So the CMC model, let's just actually go to that real quick before I leave. And you're going to notice that the wind shear is actually down in a lot of spots. Right here in the Western Pacific. And the anomalies point towards a below average pattern of wind shear as well in the Western Atlantic. So we'll see how that works. Thank you all for watching this video. Hope you guys have a great rest of the evening. Thank you for watching. Subscribe and share with your friends. Goodbye.